everyone tonight. tonight it's nice to have you back it's a beautiful evening hope you had a restful afternoon and we have hymn number three that we'd like to open the evening service with entitled worthy of worship worthy of praise hymn number three let's stand together as we sing shall we please worthy of worship worthy of praise Worthy of honor and glory, worthy of all the glad songs we can sing, worthy of all of the offerings we bring, you are worthy, Father, Creator. This evening, let's open up with a word of prayer. Brother Dick Day, if you would please, sir. be seated here it's nice to welcome pastor back from vacation uh, I feel sorry for him you know we all plan our vacations and sometimes they don't work but uh, it's really sad when day one doesn't happen and uh, let's sing together 359 shall we please people need the Lord and then 290 
shall we stand and sing what if it were today shall we Jesus is coming to earth again what if it were today coming in power and love to reign what if it were today coming to claim his chosen bride all the redeemed and purified over this whole earth scattered wide what if it were today glory glory joy to my heart will bring glory glory when we shall crown him king glory glory haste to prepare the way glory glory jesus will come someday now it's hymn number 290 if you didn't pick that up the first time around and you'd like your hymnal on verse 2 please satan's dominion will then be o'er oh that it were today sorrow and sighing shall be no more oh that it were today then shall the dead in christ arise caught up to meet him in the skies when shall these glories meet our eyes what if it were today glory glory joy to my heart will bring glory glory when we shall cry and not in fear if he should come today signs of his coming multiply morning like breaks in eastern sky watch for the time is drawing nigh what if it were today singing thank you please be seated all right well as we said it's certainly good to see all of you here tonight and quickly by way of announcements um, Clyde Coth uh, was removed this morning from the uh, ventilator and immediately went home to be with the Lord and we praise the Lord for that the uh, family uh, as we got out of church the family was already at the funeral home making preparations the funeral is going to be Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock here at the church. There will be visitation Tuesday night uh, starting at 3 o'clock for the family, but then 4 to 8 um, for the rest of us at Swartz Funeral Home on Hill Road. So um, Tuesday visitation 4 to 8, Wednesday service here at 11 o'clock. We do have a sign-up sheet for the uh, funeral dinner. We will be uh, supplying a lot of the staple items, but if you can sign up for some other goodies, we would certainly appreciate that. 
So we'll be praying for the family. We'll be meeting with them tomorrow at 10 o'clock to prepare for the service. And so if you can remember the Koth family uh, for Yvonne and their families, I know that they would appreciate that. Uh, as far as the rest of the week goes, we will be having uh, men's prayer time Tuesday morning at 8.30, ladies' prayer time Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock, and then all of our Wednesday activities will go on as scheduled. And then, uh, fellas, you've got a softball game, two of them, I think, Thursday night up in Clio. And then, uh, I believe, Friday night, college and career are going to um, Lugnuts game and see Ben if you have any questions about that. And then coming up on the 11th of August, I think the ladies are taking a field trip to Port Huron. There is evidently some fabric store that uh, is just, you just can't miss it. And uh, so we may actually go there for vacation pretty soon. Um, but uh, actually there is a good sized group of ladies that want to go and any fellas that want to go, the bus will be taking you for lunch to Port Huron and to this, uh, uh, this um, store. So if you have any questions, please see Donna Beamer, pray for her. She was in the uh, hospital this morning with somewhat of an eye infection, but she is at home and resting, so pray for her, and I know she'd appreciate that. And then coming up uh, two weeks from tonight, we will be having a, uh, not only a baptism uh, Sunday evening, but then we'll be having snack night after that, two weeks from tonight. There's a sign-up sheet out there uh, if you'd like to sign up for that. So I think that's it as far as announcements. So Jack, if you want to read our missions letter, and then we'll have our offering, okay? kind of hoping the man would the men would uh, get a trip going to a fabric store it just sounds so exciting <clears throat> uh, this is from Mark Self one of our missionaries that we support in Argentina and there's some exciting news in his letter uh, that uh, that I'm really looking forward to and here's what he has to say the Lord is doing great things in Argentina and we're thankful that he has used you to help us do the ministry in Argentina Please pray for us as we seek to do his will daily, giving him the glory for his continued blessings over our life and ministry. We believe it is important for us to come back to the U.S. every few years to share with our partnering churches what the Lord is doing in Argentina. We will be coming back to the United States in the summer of 2017 for a short furlough to visit half of our 28 supporting churches. Our plan is to visit most of our churches in the Midwest from Michigan to Iowa. This furlough will be a short three-month furlough. We do not want to be away from the ministry in Argentina for a long period of time, but we especially cannot pull our daughter, Sophia, out of school for a prolonged amount of time. However, we believe it is essential to share our ministry in Argentina with you and the church. We know we are a year out, but we want to com complete our schedule for our upcoming furlough. I would like to know if you would be willing to have us on Sunday, July the 30th, 2017, for the AM service. Please let us know if this day would work. We really look forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much. So we can start looking forward to hearing from Mark uh, in, uh, in July of next year, and I'm kind of excited about that. Also, I, I got an uh, email from Ron Self, his father. Uh, who uh, has been in Argentina for a long, long time. And he shared that one of the national pastors there, Javier, uh, had some uh, surgery done uh, and he was doing good. And all of a sudden he got a, a high uh, fever and infection. And Ron said, when they have to go in and do uh, uh, a surgery a second time, it's really, really serious. So you pray for Javier uh, while he is uh, going through this, this special time in his life. Man, if you want to come forward. Okay, let's pray. Father, thanks again for this day. Thank you for your blessings, Father, that you freely bestow upon us and for the love that you have for us, Father. I thank you for our missionaries. I thank you for uh, what they give up, Father. They give up so much many times to go to a foreign country, to learn a language that they're not familiar with, to go to a culture, Father, that's new and different, and they have to adapt to it. And Father, I just pray that you'll uh, be with the selves who are ministering in Argentina, Father. Thank you for them. We look forward to uh, hearing uh, from them next year. I pray that you'll be with Javier, Father, in a special way that the doctors, as they have to 
uh, do some uh, further surgery, Father, that all go well. You'll raise them up uh, uh, to complete health once again. Now, Father, I pray that you'll be at the offering. I pray that you'll bless it. I pray, Father, to be used to bring honor and glory to your name. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. talk it over in the by and by. It's a great song, especially when the choir sings it. I enjoy directing it immensely. Let's do some choruses though, shall we? Beginning with Christ for me. Savior, my Lord and King, I'm so happy I shout and sing, Christ for me, yes it's Christ for me, every day as I go my way, it is Christ. Safe am I in the hollow of his hand, sheltered o'er, sheltered o'er, with his love forevermore. No ill can harm me, no foe alarm me, for he keeps both day and night. Safe am I. Safe am I in the hollow of his hand. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord, singing, Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's
let's stand and sing it again, shall we please? Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord. Singing, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. I want to know you, oh, I want to know you, to feel your heart, to know your mind, looking in your eyes, stirs up within me, cries that say, I want to know you, oh, I want to know you more. to know you more deep within my soul I want to know you oh I want to know you and I would keep my final breath to know you in your death and resurrection oh I want to know you so much. Please be seated. Um, I think it was just last week that uh, the congregation and the choir both sang a number entitled We Will Remember and tonight there's a number that uh, is going to be done by Tim and Linda Dubovsky and I'm going to join them. Thank you by the way. He Remembered Me. Made it. 
the world cannot destroy. I will not forget his mercy, his love so full and free. I will not forget my Savior, in love he remembered me. I will not forget my Savior, his love so full and free. I will not Thank you, folks. Just before Andrew comes, I'd like to let you know of something else that happened. Um, last night, there was an accident on uh, Dort Highway and Dodge Road. Uh, and this happened to be uh, Harriet Benson and Jack Culver's second cousin, who was killed in that accident as a uh, driver, uh, the other driver ran through a red light. And uh, so Harriet and, and Jack's second cousin, I believe his name was Mike Weger. Weger. Uh, some of you may know that name, but it is of special interest because he is the sound man at Mount Morris Community where Pastor Aaron is now preaching. So you can just kind of imagine what a, uh, a shock that must be. So pray for Harriet and Jack, and I know they'd appreciate that. And certainly pray for uh, Pastor Aaron as he does that funeral, uh, pray for that church, as I'm sure they will certainly be seeking some comfort. Uh, but it's certainly good to have Andrew here. He's going to preach tonight. I wasn't planning on being here, and I didn't have anything ready. So uh, Andrew has uh, just, uh, he and Ben both have just jumped right in. They're going to be filling in over the next uh, couple of Sundays, and uh, uh, both of them just doing an outstanding job, and just love them both and appreciate what they're doing. Andrew, it's all yours. Good evening. So I appreciate the special music. It sounded like where I come from, so that's, that's my type of music. So, um, But I really appreciated that. Um, little does Pastor know, um, I didn't think he was going to be here either. My original plan was we were just going to meet, pray, and go home. So, uh, um, But now that he's here, I threw something together this, this evening. <clears throat> So I want to take a little poll this evening. Um, just, uh, just raise your hand if this applies to you. Um, who in here, raise your hand, if you are tired? Okay, a few. Tired. Sorry. Sean will be my translator for the evening. So, uh, but, uh, thank you, Sean. Okay, so sleepy. All right. Um, raise your hand uh, if you are physically worn out. Physically, you need a nap. You didn't get enough sleep. All right, what about um, emotionally? I'm, I'm emotionally tired. Okay. So this evening, I want to talk about where do we go to find rest? Where do we go to get the rest that we need from this life? Um, the world that we live in today, there are many different stressors in everyone's life. The stress that I have in my life is different than the stress that you have in your life. And the way that we handle this stress is differently, or is different, but the place that we go to get comfort, to get relief, to get rest is the same place. When we are physically tired, we take a nap. When we're physically tired, we might go and schedule a massage. We might go schedule a spa day. Um, we might schedule, um, if you're Ben, might schedule a trip to go get fabric to kind of release a little bit. Um, but if we are physically tired, we have things to do in this world that we can get physical rest from. If we are emotionally tired, if we're having a rough time at work or, or um, the things at home are just are wearing us down, we can take a vacation and we can get away from things for a little while. 
we can um, you know, do our favorite hobby and kind of release a little bit of emotional tension and get some emotional rest. But what I want to look at this evening is what do we do whenever we are spiritually tired? It's one thing to be physically tired. It's another thing to be emotionally tired. But it's, an, it's, a, it's a far larger thing to be spiritually tired, spiritually worn out. So this evening, if you would, open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 11. We're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 11, verses 28, 29, and 30 this evening. Matthew 11, starting in verse 28, it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for uh, another opportunity to be in church. Lord, I thank you for an opportunity to open the word, to open the words that your son Jesus has given us, Lord. And I pray that this evening, um, if we come to you tired, if we come to you broken down spiritually um, away from you, Lord, I pray that we would take this time to come to you for rest. Lord, I pray that we would find the rest we need this evening, Lord, and I pray that we would all be um, open to what you have for us, Lord. It's in your name we ask these things. Amen. So tonight, I want to look at three commands that Jesus gives us in finding rest in these verses. This is a very popular passage in the Bible. It's one that many of us know, um, but until I got to this point where I wanted to study it, um, you know, I really didn't look at what these verses really were saying, really what they mean, and the commands that are given in them. And we're going to see three commands, excuse me, that Jesus gives to find rest. And the first command we see in verse 28, it says, Come unto me. During Jesus' earthly ministry, he oftentimes was, te he was telling the people to come to him. Um, whether it be little children or, or grown diseased men or women, he was saying, come to me. Draw to me. It, he was saying, I want, I want to draw the people to me. And the first thing that we have to do whenever we are Christian is come to Christ. To become a Christian, you have to come to Jesus Christ. Being a Christian, first and foremost, is meeting Jesus on a personal level. Um, it doesn't matter uh, if you join a church. It doesn't matter if you join a group. It doesn't matter if um, you have memorized a thousand verses. It doesn't matter how many hymns you know by heart. It doesn't matter if you're from a Christian family. It doesn't matter how many services per week you come to. If you do not start with a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you are not a Christian. You haven't come to Him. So the first step is if you are here tonight and you do not know Jesus Christ your Savior and you are tired emotionally, you are tired spiritually, you are not finding the rest you need, you need to come to Jesus Christ. I, I think we've all heard the quote, you know, sitting in a garage doesn't make you a car, coming to church doesn't make you a Christian. And that's so true that we, we trick ourselves so many times, you know, before we are saved or even... Um, you know, we know people that trick themselves into thinking that we are Christians when we have zero personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We haven't come to Him yet. We will never find rest. No one on this earth will ever find rest outside of Jesus Christ. So what of, the, what of us who are already saved? You know, if... If you do not know Jesus Christ, of course you're not going to find rest. But what of us um, that are saved? What of us that have come to Jesus Christ before? We've already came to Him, but we're still spiritually tired. Um, it, we, we've already come to Jesus. We've already done that step, but we're saying, I'm still spiritually tired. I'm still worn down every single day. I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life where I've felt a thousand miles away from Jesus Christ. After salvation, I've been saved, I've been baptized, I've been in church my entire life, but I feel like there is a huge gap between Jesus Christ and myself. I was feeling this way um, pretty heavily at my freshman year in college, and uh, I became very good friends with, um, with the dean of men who was also the soccer coach. 
And I, w I went in and talked to him in his office and I said, I just feel like there, my relationship with God is stagnant. I feel like um, he's not in my life. I just feel like he's not there. He's not speaking to me. And he asked me a very simple question. He said, well, which direction are you running? And that's all he had to say. He was pretty much saying, are you coming to Christ or are you going away from Christ? Are you abiding with him or are you not? Because Jesus Christ is always there. He's always standing there. You're, you're no more than, than the distance from your knee to the ground getting back into a perfect relationship with Christ. So which way are you going? Because He's there. And it, I stopped and I thought, you know, I am not actively pursuing Jesus Christ. I am not coming to Him and therefore I am not getting rest. You know, God is constantly saying to His children, constantly saying to us on earth, come to me. Come to me. Abide with me. I want to give you this rest. Just come to me. All we have to do is come to Christ with a reverent heart and our relationship with Him can be restored in that instant. And that's amazing to think that, that our relationship with Jesus Christ, the sin that we've been committing, the things that we've been doing, the laziness in our relationship with Him, it can all be stopped in an instant if we just get on our knees and say, God, will you please forgive me for my sinful actions? And our relationship with Him will be restored and we can find rest in Him. To find the rest we are seeking, we, we first have to come to Christ. He goes on to, in verse 28 to say, um, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. All ye that labor... So this, this laboring that he talks about isn't talking about a physical going out and plowing your fields labor. It's not talking about a working with your hands labor. It's talking about those that are striving to follow the laws. Those that are trying to, to follow the rules and the regulations to a T and those that are trying to be accepted by God by their actions. For those that are laboring and are heavy laden, for those that are burdened, by the sins of this world. For those that are burdened by knowing that, that they cannot be accepted by God in and of themselves. He's saying, come unto me and I will give you rest. Come unto me, ye that labor. Come unto me, those that are, are striving to have a relationship with me. Those that are striving, excuse me, striving to follow the rules. Striving to not sin. Come to me and I will give you rest. Our human efforts are always going to fall short of being accepted by God. Always. Um, there's, there's nothing we can do. There's no action that we can, we can do. All we have to do is accept Jesus Christ and we are found acceptable um, in God's eyes. He gives rest to those that are seeking salvation. And He gives rest to those that have salvation and need a reminder of what He has done for them. So oftentimes I feel that we get tired in our relationship. We get tired spiritually because we forget what Jesus Christ has done for us. We forget that um, we have come to Him and we were laboring trying to find answers in this world. We were burdened with our sin. We were burdened knowing that our destination was hell and we came to Him and He gave us spiritual rest and now that we have them it's like we seem to forget that. We seem to forget what Jesus Christ has done in our lives and we feel like we're thousands of miles away from Him. And He is saying to, to us, come to me. Come back to me. Secondly, in verse 29, it says, take my yoke upon you. Tim, if you wouldn't mind putting the picture up. So, for those of you that need a reminder, or for those of you that don't know, this is um, a picture of a yoke. Um, a yoke is, is a wooden harness that two oxen or two ox would be strapped together to, to plow a field or do some sort of task. And um, this is the picture that Jesus is painting for us in Matthew. He is saying, take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke. Um, you know, whenever they, they had these yokes, if you look on um, our left side, uh, you would see a, a bigger ring, a bigger side. And if you look on the right side, you see a smaller ring and a smaller side. Um, 
back when, when in biblical days, as I did some study and I couldn't find pictures because they didn't have pictures, but, uh, but this is the closest one I could find, but they would always strap a, a big ox, a big um, experienced ox, an ox that knew what he was doing, knew how to plow a field, knew how to follow directions. They would put him on one side, and then they would put a young ox on the other side, one that didn't know what they were doing, that needed direction, that that couldn't plow a field by themselves, they put that on the other side. And this is the picture that Jesus is painting for us. Take my yoke upon you. And, and to me, that is, that is a beautiful picture of the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ. He is, he is our big ox. <laughs> he is the experienced one. He knows what he is doing. And we are on his side trying to figure it out. And he's leading us along the way. The picture that is painted here is that of a, a student um, learning from a master. In New Testament times, the phrase, take the yoke of, fill in the blank, excuse me, was used by rabbis to re refer to becoming submitted to a teacher. The phrase or thought of taking a, the yoke or, or taking someone's yoke was used in the New Testament six times. And, and Almost every time uh, it had one idea, but, but here we see a second idea. So the two ideas of taking a yoke upon yourself, um, the first one is the yoke of rules and religion. Uh, if you'll turn quickly to Acts chapter 15 and verse 7. Acts 15, 7 says, And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved even as they. Now the yoke that, that is seen here is the yoke of the rigid religious system. The, the yoke of, of man saying you have to do this, 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 and this. And no man could ever follow all those rules. No man could ever um, measure up to that yoke. They couldn't wear that comfortably. It didn't fit what they needed. And so many times we put on the yoke of man. We put on man's yoke. We try to see what man wants, what is acceptable in man's eyes, what their level of success is, and we try to measure up to man's yoke. And, and that is one picture of a yoke that we see in the New Testament. That of, that's the yoke of rules and religion. And we do not find rest in the yoke of rules and religion. We do not find rest trying to fit into, into man's yoke, into what man says is right and wrong. And Jesus is not offering us a yoke of rules and religion. He's not offering us a set of do this, do this, do this, do this, and then you'll be accepted. He is offering us a yoke of rest. He is offering us a yoke that fits our need perfectly. Our need is salvation and He has accomplished that. And His yoke gives us that. All we have to do is take it upon ourselves. Take that salvation upon ourselves. And he goes on to say um, in verse 30, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The yoke of rules and religion does not offer rest. The yoke of God offers us a relationship with Him. Not rules and religion. The yoke of God offers a relationship and the deeper our relationship gets with Jesus Christ, the more rest we find. There are also three things that um, are interesting about a yoke that, that I think would paint a picture of what Jesus Christ does for us as we wear this yoke with Him. First of all, a yoke, um, if you wouldn't mind bringing it back up. Yokes, as we can see, are meant for two. They're not meant for one. One ox, one um, creature is not supposed to um, be hooked up to this thing. It takes two to wear this. It takes two 
um, to, to go along with this yoke. And um, we are not meant to accept Christ and then go on our merry way all alone. Um, taking Jesus Christ, taking his yoke upon us at salvation is saying, I am, going, I am beside you. I am hooked on to you. I am connected to you. We are supposed to be connected to Jesus Christ in this life. We are not meant to be away from Him. And sometimes in life, whenever I feel the most spiritually tired, whenever I need the most rest, is whenever I'm not hooked up to that yoke. Whenever I am not um, pulling along with Jesus Christ, whenever I'm trying to go my separate way. So the first picture that I get is, is the yoke is meant for two, it's not for, meant for one. We are not meant to wear this yoke by ourselves. Secondly, the picture of the yoke is that of two oxen pulling in the same direction. They aren't just connected together. They're not just um, meant for two. It's meant for two ox to be together, to be working together in the same direction. If you have put on this yoke of Jesus Christ, if you claim to be wearing this with Jesus Christ, then you should not be pulling away from His direction. Again, in, in, in my personal experience, in my personal life, the, the times that I'm most tired is whenever I feel like I'm fighting with what God wants. Whenever I, I feel like he, he, He's saying, go this way, and I'm saying, nope, I'm going this way. When He says, uh, I'm going to go this way, and, and then I say, no, I'm going this way. And, and you can uh, see some videos. I tried to find a video of, of a small ox and a big ox and, and one pulling, but... Uh, if you were to see a big ox and a small ox together and the big one was pulling one way and the small one was pulling another way, guess who's going to lose? The small one. Now, you might put up, it might put up a fight for a little while, but eventually that big ox is going to say, nope, we're going this way. And I think a lot of us can look back in our lives. We can see Jesus leading us. We can see God's hand in our lives. And we can see those times when we're like that little ox not wanting to go with the big ox. And we're saying, nope, I'm going this way. And he says, all right, we can go this way a little bit. And you say, nope, I'm going this way. And finally, he says, no, you're going this way. When the whole time, if we would have just cooperated, if we would have just had that single mindset with Jesus Christ, with God's leading, with what he wanted in our life, it would have, get, it would have saved us a lot of energy. It would have um, caused us to be more restful. And then thirdly, there's cooperation in the yoke. For a yoke to work, for this system to work, the two ox need to be working together. They need to be in step with one another. They need to have the same mindset. Um, and, and we know that God is perfect. We know that He is the perfect ox in this situation, if you will. And we are not. So guess who needs to be the one cooperating? It's us. And so often, we, we want to pray to God and our prayers, even though they don't sound exactly like this, um, if you were to get to the heart of our prayers, our, the heart of our prayers would say, no God, you're wrong, you need to do this. I don't know about you, but I oftentimes in my prayer life find myself giving God advice. Telling Him what's best for me. And that is not how His yoke works. His yoke works by Him saying, this is what needs to happen. And we, say, and we saying, okay, let's do that. So taking Jesus' yoke upon us we find rest because He's leading with us. He is working with us. He is working for the same, or, or He's trying to get us to work um, in the same goal that, that He is working. When we are joined with Christ, when we take upon His yoke, we understand that the things that we do here on earth have eternal value. Before we take upon His yoke, um, the things that we are doing on earth is just for ourselves, it's just for um, the here and now. And when we are opened, uh, when we have our eyes open, we realize that the work that we are doing, that everything that we do on this earth has eternal value. We experience true rest when we take the yoke upon, uh, the yoke of Jesus and abide with Him and work with Him. Because true rest is only found when we are obedient to Jesus Christ and His leading. Because in verse 40, 30, it says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And then thirdly, the third uh, command in verse 29, 
It says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Jesus wants, to, wants us to learn from him. Just like the, the young ox would learn from the big ox. Just like um, the, the young ox would learn how to pull, to learn how to use his strengths, to use the gifts that he has. God wants us to learn from him. He wants us to be in his word and learn about him. And the more we learn about Jesus Christ, the deeper our relationship is with Jesus Christ. And the deeper our relationship with Jesus Christ is, the more that we abide with Him. And the more we are abiding with Jesus Christ, the more rest we have. Jesus wants us to have a deep relationship with Him. And we can only have a deep relationship with Him if we are learning from Him. Or learning of Him. And it says, And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Another word for meek here would be gentle. I am gentle. So many times um, we, we have, I, I know that we have a lot of relationships on this earth. We have, you know, I, I have a relationship with my wife, with her family, with my family, with people in the church. And so often we come to people that are friends, people that we have relationships with, and we, we tell them of our struggles. We tell them of what's going on in our lives. And oftentimes people in this world are rude to us. Oftentimes, people uh, on, this, on this earth are, aren't accepting, they're not loving, they're not gentle with us. And Jesus says, learn of me, for I am gentle, for I am meek. If we come to Jesus Christ with our sins, He isn't going to rub them in our face. Jesus didn't come here to rub our sins in our face, He came here to wash them. And when we come to Jesus Christ, and we tell Him our faults, we tell Him our sins... We can come to Him knowing that He is going to be gentle with us. Knowing that, yes, when we live in, a, in sin for a while, we know in the Bible that He will reprimand us. He will bring us back into subjection. But when we finally get down on our knees and say, Jesus, I'm sorry, please forgive me. He's gentle. And He is forgiving. And it says, and I'm lowly at heart. He is humble. He is selfless. We see Jesus' uh, ministry on earth. We see how selfless He was on earth. Um, anything that he could do, he, he, for others, he would do it. He, he was never thinking of himself. He was never thinking of his own personal comfort. And we see that oftentimes how he, he tries to tell uh, his disciples, you know, to, to not think of themselves and to be a servant. And he is selfless. And it's saying here that he is lowly in heart. He is selfless. He is humble. And that's the, that's the Jesus Christ we serve. Um, whenever I was younger, I, I struggled with my faith so much. I, I struggled with that personal relationship that other people talked about, that loving relationship that other people talked about, that sweet relationship with Jesus Christ that others talked about. I, I didn't understand that because to me, all I had with Jesus was, was the, the, um, the person policing the rules and regulations I had to follow. And all I knew is I failed every day and I had to apologize to Him every single day. And that was my relationship with Jesus Christ. It wasn't a relationship with a gentle creator, with a gentle savior, with a selfless savior. It was a relationship with a ruler and I was his slave. And not in the, the, the servanthood sense, the, the whipping of a slave sense. And it wasn't until my eyes were opened that Jesus doesn't want a a slave that he can push around and make sure that he follows his rules. He wants a friend that will serve him. My eyes were open to what, to what a true relationship with Jesus Christ was. And then I started to understand that sweet relationship with Jesus Christ. And I think that we feel tired spiritually. We feel um, miles apart from God spiritually when we forget that. When we forget about the gentle Savior that we have. We forget about the selfless Savior that we have. And all we view Jesus as, all if you view God is, or as, excuse me, is someone that wants us to follow the rules and regulations. And although following um, God's commands are important, I'm not saying that you just go do whatever you want in sin. I hope you're not doing that. Even though that, that's not what I'm saying at all, Jesus wants us to realize that it is not us that makes us acceptable. It's Him. And when we find ourselves accepted in Jesus Christ because of Him, we can find that rest. 
And I think that we forget to, to remind ourselves of, of that every single day. I, I, I feel like that's something we need to, to remind ourselves every morning when we wake up. We need to remind ourselves of the gospel. We need to remind ourselves of what Jesus Christ did for us. And we would find a lot more rest in our spiritual life. Jesus is humble and selfless and cares for our every need. Hurting, lost, sinful, weary people come to him and he says, I will give you rest. And then it, it says that at the end of verse 29, it says, and ye shall find rest for your souls. We are given true rest when we realize what Christ has done for us on the cross. And we are given true rest when we remember what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. I challenge you this evening, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, if you have not accepted His free gift of salvation, if you are trying to, to be a good person in this world, if you're trying to follow the rules and regulations and you're trying to be accepted by God, it's not going to happen unless you accept His free gift of salvation. And if you say, well, I've already done that, great, praise the Lord. But if, if you've already done that and you feel like that relationship with Jesus Christ is not sweet, you feel like you're a thousand miles away from Him, come to Him. Come to Him and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Come to Him and say, Lord, I want to put that yoke on. I want to be connected to You. I want You leading me. I want to learn from You. And Jesus Christ will give you rest. We need to... Preach, ourselves, preach to ourselves the gospel of Jesus Christ every day and remind ourselves every day that we are accepted not from what we do but from what Jesus Christ did for us. I am going to attempt to sing a chorus that goes along with this verse in closing. Uh, we, um, the church that, that I grew up in, we um, supported a missionary to Italy. And uh, one of the things he does on the mission field is he takes verses in the Bible and he puts music to them. He puts a chorus to them. And this one is one that I remember. Um, it stuck with me for a while. And, and whenever I feel spiritually tired, whenever I feel miles away from God, whenever I feel like um, the sweet relationship is fading with Jesus, this tune somehow pops into my head. And I, I remember these words. And... Uh, um, I, uh, like pastor, I'm not very good at memorizing verses. Um, but if you put verses to music, I found that it's much easier to remember them. So I'm going to attempt to sing this chorus. <clears throat> Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly at heart. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly at heart, and ye shall find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you once again for a time that we can be in your word. Lord, I pray if there's anyone here that is tired spiritually, if there's anyone here that needs rest, Lord, if they have not found you, I pray that they would accept you as, your, as their personal Savior and find true rest and a true relationship with you. And Lord, I pray if there's anyone here that has accepted you, but they feel far away from you, Lord, I pray that they would remember the work that you have done in their life. And I pray that they would come back to you, abide with you, learn from you. And Lord, I pray that they would find the rest that they are seeking. Lord, I pray that you would give us a, a good week, Lord, and I pray that we would have opportunities to minister to others and we would take those opportunities. It's in your name we ask these things. Amen.
Thank you, Andrew. Let's sing together hymn number 458. Shall we please? Near to the heart of God. 458. Shall we stand, please? a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God a place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God oh Jesus blessed Sent from the heart of God, O thus who wait before thee, near to the heart of God, there is a place of comfort sweet. of God, a place where we our Savior meet, near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, bless, Redeemer, sin from the appreciate that. Um, I think the foregone conclusion is we all know what it means to be physically exhausted when we just don't know we can go another hour. But it's a scary thing when we are spiritually exhausted because emotions start to take over. We start to get a little frustrated. We start to get a little angry. We start to get a little what do I do next? God, where are you? Um, what, a, what a beautiful picture. Jesus Christ is always there waiting, and I will give you rest. Thank you, Andrew. We appreciate that. I'm going to ask you and Michaela, if you want to head to the back door, please greet them on your way out. Don't forget the activities of the week. Don't forget the uh, ladies' prayer meeting Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock, men's prayer meeting Tuesday morning at 8.30 all of our regular Wednesday evening services. And then don't forget the uh, funeral viewing for Clyde Coth Tuesday night from 4 to 8 at Swartz Funeral Home on Hill Road. And then the uh, service will be here at 11 o'clock Wednesday. There will be an hour of visitation before the service starts here at the church. Uh, again, as far as the dinner goes, the church will be providing most of the staple items. But if you can check the sign-in sheet or check with Rita, uh, we can make sure and uh, you can be a big blessing to us as far as the remainder of the meal. So pray for Yvonne and the family, and I know that they would appreciate that. We appreciate you all being here, and uh, if there's anything that we can do for you, please let us know as we are dismissed. Uh, Sean Tabor, if you would please, sir.